Welcome once again, viewers, for this uh, morning's devotion, the Friday. Uh, we thank you for joining us. We thank you for being with us. We know that um, you love the Lord. We know that you care about how your spiritual um, being is growing. And I believe this is the reason to why you tune in every morning for the sake of nurturing and giving food, your daily bread, to your spirit, your soul. So feel very much welcome. Let us start with a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you once again for guiding us into your presence this morning. We know that you intend to feed us. You intend to encourage us for the day that is ahead of us. So Holy Spirit, come and walk with us and move within us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray, believing and trusting. Amen. Reverend Dennis, once again, bringing uh, today's devotion uh, by the grace of God and the teens minister. And I feel blessed to be standing here before you. And today I would like to start with a small story I had recently of a man who got a knock in his, on his door one day. And when he went to open, it was a beggar uh, who was asking for food. And this man asked the beggar to go behind or rather at the back door where he would go and serve him the food that he has in his house. So when he went and sat down, the man went through, went back into his house, got some food and went to the back door. He opened the door and found the beggar standing there. He asked the beggar to sit on the floor and he served him uh, with a hot um, meal um, and he asked him to pray with him. And so he told him to pray after him. And he said, our father. And the beggar said, your father. Again, he said, no, no, no. Say, our father. Okay. And then again, he closed his eyes and they started by praying, our father. Waiting for the beggar to say, our father. Again, he said, your father. And he asked him, why, why, are you, why aren't you saying, our father? And he said, I don't want to sound a liar and I'm grateful that you're giving me this food, but if indeed you tell me that your father is my father, I believe you treat me a little bit different. You would ask me in into your house so that you could sit me by your table and we eat together. By telling me to say our father, it would mean that we are actually brothers. I don't think you'll give stale food to, uh, to your own blood brother. So forgive me if I don't say our father, but I just say your father. It was a wake-up call for this uh, Christian, and I hope it is a wake-up wake wake call for us today as we start this devotion, as we reflect from where we stopped yesterday, from the book of 2 Kings, chapter 6, from verses 3. It says, Then one of them said, this is one of the prophets. Then one of them said, Won't you please come with your servants? I will, Elisha replied, and he went with them. Today, today's topic will be looking at the sanctuary, a place for pastoral care. When you look at this story that we've just started with, this was a person who wanted to show care to this person, but do you think he was treating him with the same kind of dignity that you are expecting him to treat a fellow Christian? Do you think this person was being just even as he was sharing this meal? When you're looking at pastoral care, you're looking at a people who have been hurt, people who have gone through a difficult time, and pastoral care is one of the tools that a minister uses to go out and reach out to people who have been uh, hit by the troubles of this world to try and remind them that the Lord is still uh, in control in their lives. Pastoral care is a term that refers to the practices pastors do to shepherd or care for individuals in their local congregation. The effects of it are directed towards healing, sustaining, guiding, reconciling, and nurturing of persons whose troubles and concerns arise in the context of daily interaction. These sons of the prophets who used to gather together for 
fellowship, prayers, and even for interceding for the country at that particular time, requested for the company of the man of God, Elisha, to go with them. I don't know why they felt the need of encouraging him to come because if indeed if it was like a time like now and we were going out to build CTC, I believe the pastors went out with you. We are moving with you. I believe if it was probably elders in the church who were going out for a function, I believe the vicar of that church would voluntarily give himself to, to go with them. But from what we read, we hear one of them asking, won't you please come with your servants? I like to, I would like to believe that this was a group that was not very dominant in um, the, the Christian faith at that particular time. Probably um, they, were, they thought that uh, the pastor was just coming to flag off a ministry and then disappear and leave them to continue with it. And for, for many times, we've had this being said of young people because sometimes young people's activities are so engaging that probably um, the ministers or even the parents sometimes feel that I will not fit in with them. And so maybe I'll just pray for them and leave them to go ahead. But this, in this particular sense, we are being told that the young sons of the prophets requested the presence of the prophet Elisha to go with them. The CTC that we are so much struggling as a church to come up with, as a teens minister, I would like to say that it is going to be one of the greatest opportunities that the children and the teens are going to have to interact with their uh, ministers. I say this because whenever I'm thinking about pastoral care for my teens, and I believe it's also the same case with the children, whenever I go out to meet with uh, family members for the sake of ministering to the young people, most of the time I find the conversation um, going more towards reaching out to the parents and equipping them so they can become better uh, parents for the family. Little time will I have with the children. In fact, most of the time when I go, I, I look forward to maybe meeting the children outside playing so that I can sit down with them, maybe find them riding bicycles, and maybe I can just stand by the roadside and have a word of encouragement to them. Most of the time as a teens minister, I'll be looking forward to going to schools because that is where I'm going to meet with them at their normal environment, in their true self. Reverend Appella will say, in their real metal. And so pastoral care to the young ones is going to be something that is going to be reachable through the CTC because of what we are envisioning with the CTC. The CTC is not going to be a normal sanctuary as we are used to the conventional sanctuary with pews and the altar, of course, it is going to be there. But we are, we, we are envisioning a place where during the week it does not remain idle. We have spaces where children can come and maybe throw a little bit of basketball, maybe come and do table tennis, where we push aside the seeds and we sit down to uh, worship and, you know, just sing for the Lord. We were even having one of us challenging us to even have um, a, a swimming pool where they can just come and hang out. And as they are hanging out, the minister gets to meet with them. As a teens minister, in the five years that I have managed to work with teenagers and youths, I have been challenged to come up with ways on how I can have the young people get out of their homes, out of their comfort zones, and meet me outside in the world, where I would engage them in. Sometimes maybe we are planting trees through the Green Anglican movement, and as we are getting our hands soiled, as we are cutting down the bushes and clearing them for the sake of bringing in a new fresh bunch of trees, at that point when we are all vulnerable and dirty, 
that's the point where I get to minister to these young people. And I believe this is why they felt that we need to isolate ourselves with Elisha. We need to draw him out from his comfort zone. Let him come with us, and we shall see a little bit later how, how he was effective in ministry by just following that young group of prophets outside this, the sanctuary and go out into the Jordan River, at the bank of Jordan River, to cut down trees for the sake of building a church. Friends, today the children's ministry, this month of November, the children's ministry are asking you to come out with them, walk out with them to the Jordan River so that we can cut down in your own little effort, get the number of poles that you can get for the sake of building a magnificent sanctuary that we are calling the Children's and Teens Center where they can have a moment of interacting with God. We talked about that place being a place of um, destiny molding. Give them a chance to interact with their father in a very genuine way. I have heard many times when I have called for altar call, young people later on telling me, you know, I did not respond to the altar call because I was afraid of what my friends would think. Some other time, especially when you go to schools, others will see their friends rushing uh, for the altar call and they will run along because they don't want to be left behind. That is more of peer pressure. With, when, when you are ministering to the young people, you need to be sensitive to the things that they go through. One of the things that you'll come to appreciate, and I know you acknowledge, is that they are very sensitive about how other people around them think about them. And so the city see as much as it is part of all saints' family, it is going to be an opportunity for the young people to just retreat a little bit from the normalcy of pews, from the normalcy of sitting down in the normal conventional way, and they get to have their hands dirty. Like one of the things we are going to be building towards the eighth uh, as teens is that we are going to be uh, collecting little funding for the sake of starting a nursery, a tree nursery. And we are hoping this tree nursery, we ourselves are going to be taking care of it. We shall be having Form 1s and Form 2s and Form 3s and Form 4s coming in their own timing to come and take care of the trees that we have. It will be a little nursery where we'll start teaching them responsibility. And we are hoping, because we are more of experiential teachers, the lessons that we are going to be drawing from this nursery will be seen at home, they will be seen at school, they will be seen in the community. So when, if you've heard of your teenagers asking you to give them a little bit of funding for the sake of sending towards the C3 Mti C account, the Green Saints account through the M-Pesa, please hold their hands and give them a little bit of resource so that they too can start a small um, seed to see that is going to grow up with the monument that you are building. What we have on this side is an embodiment of software. They would like to see their little project grow up to become something magnificent. From these trees, they shall be coming uh, to church, when they shall be coming for confirmation, for the bishop to pray over them and bless their trees as they go out to plant the trees to celebrate what the Lord has done for them. We are hoping that as the children will be coming in for dedications, parents will be passing by and picking a tree that they will be planting. Because one thing we've come to learn about the young people of today, if we are going to keep them in church long enough, they want to see whether the church cares about their tomorrow. They want to see whether parents care about their tomorrow. And they're telling us in a very vocal voice that they care about the environment. That is one of the things, environmental justice. After that, you'll be hearing them uh, talking about justice towards the poor, the, the, the poor in our society. How I pray that as this teens minister and the Sunday school minister come together to try and build a software for the CTC, 
please hold our hands and may you walk with us and teach them to be responsible at home. We share this in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We thank you, Lord, for giving us this chance to hear from you. We pray that these words are going to be a seed in our hearts to grow, germinate, and become a great fruit that the community, the church, the country, the world will enjoy in this generation and in the worlds to come. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray, believing, and trusting. Amen. May God bless you.